There is more to a name than just simply a reference to an individual. These particular names are a tribute to our ancestors and a legacy for the future. They represent a lasting reminder of the men and women who helped pioneer the North American continent. And they instill a feeling of the sacrifices and struggles that these people had to endure in order to survive in the new world. Today, those of you who bear these and other names may live far apart from one another, but no matter what part of the world you may currently reside in, there is one thing that will always link this family together. You are all descendants of David Ackerman. It all began here in 1662 in New Amsterdam, presently known as Manhattan, New York. David and his family traveled a great distance from their homeland of Holland. Sadly, though, we have no record of David, the father, ever arriving in the New World, and therefore it's believed that he died soon after their arrival, or perhaps during the rough sea voyage. The records do indicate that David's wife Elizabeth and six children arrived in New Amsterdam on November 14, 1662, aboard the sailing ship Vos, a Dutch name meaning the fox. We may never fully understand why David Ackerman would uproot his family from their native land and settle thousands of miles away. However, economic and religious reasons tend to be the main catalyst for their journey. By 1630, most of the Spanish had left the southern portion of the Netherlands and the original population moved back to their native land. This was after centuries of wars and religious inquisitions that had occurred throughout Europe. It is around this time when our Ackerman family came onto the scene. We know the Ackerman name is Germanic in origin and one of the oldest in Europe. But the earliest Ackerman record we know of is of a Hendrik Ackerman, born in Ghent, Belgium, in 1260. We do not know whether he is of our family. However, David's father was Lawrence Hendricks Ackerman, a definite similarity to the name Hendrik Ackerman. David, born in 1614 in the town of Oss, married Elizabeth Bellier of Amsterdam in 1641. They would eventually have six children, and when David was approximately 48 years of age, he and his family were living in the town of Geffen, Holland. David was an educated man, a school teacher, a respected master, and a church vuslayer or deacon in the town's Dutch Reformed Church. Geffen was a very small community of about 1,000 people, and only a few of them belonged to the Dutch Reformed Church. It's quite possible that David saw religious as well as economic opportunities in the well-established colony of New Amsterdam perhaps the reason he and his family set sail for the New World. New Amsterdam in 1662 was a busy trading town, and our records indicate that by June of 1663, Elizabeth and her children, sons Johannes, Lawrence, Laudwick, Abraham, David Jr., and daughter Anakin were living in a small house on Marketveldstieg, or Market Street. It was across from where the weekly market was held, near the fort, which at that time had become old and neglected. The house was not far from the settlement's protecting wall, which is the present location of Wall Street in Lower Manhattan. During that first year, providing for herself and her large family must have been a difficult task for Elizabeth. She did manage to sell and trade many items from her home. This was a very common way to conduct business back then, since there were no stores or offices. Elizabeth would sell beer, wine, butter, and trade pelts to earn money. On occasion, she sold household goods to obtain food for her children. Just two years after their arrival in 1664, the British took control of New Amsterdam, which was to last till the end of the Revolutionary War some hundred years later. Apparently, British control of their new homeland did not have an adverse effect on Elizabeth and her family. Five years later, in 1669, at age 52, Elizabeth married Keir Walters, and they and the boys moved north a few miles to his farm in Harlem. Anakin, at that time, had married Nathaniel Henyon, and the two stayed in New Amsterdam. Through the years, Anakin and her husband had 12 children, and we are just now discovering more information on this branch of our Ackerman family. The brothers began to leave home when they were in their late teens.
Currently, there are no further records that we can locate of David's eldest son, Johannes. As for the remaining four brothers, they each, at one time or another, lived in New Jersey, specifically in an area which, during their time, was primarily inhabited by Indian tribes and would one day be known as Bergen County, New Jersey. Well, Bergen County, I think, had a lot of uh, similarities in terms of the terrain and the opportunities to Holland. Kevin Wright, historian and curator of the Ackerman Zabriskie von Steuben House in River Edge, New Jersey. There were a lot of um, similar features in the navigable rivers, and the Dutch, of course, were born, I guess, to navigation, so I think they felt very comfortable here. It was a very familiar land to them. Excellent farmland, one of the most fertile valleys uh, on the uh, seaboard. Pat Bissett, national president of the DAD 1662 Family Association, visited with Kevin to learn more about the early Dutch settlers. What was life like back in David's time? Uh, I think the amount of labor or hardship that these people endured uh, would be incomprehensible to most modern people. The um, clearing of the land, uh, the sheer physical exertion of uh, breaking the soil, and even when you think about it, working in, uh, of course, agriculture was pre-mechanized at that point, so, <laughs> You're uh, plowing behind animals that, uh, like draught oxen that weigh 3,500 pounds and, you know, attempting to control a beast of that size in your daily labors. I think probably the most telling statistics that we have is study of some old cemetery records suggests that the average life expectancy of a man could be 38 years of a woman was about 42 years. The death rate among women between, say, 16 years of age and 40 years of age, their childbearing years, uh, is astounding. And some cemeteries suggest that as many as 25% uh, of uh, all individuals born never lived to be 15 years of age. Men also, now we don't have much firsthand description, say, in. Bergen County, but I have read some accounts when they began to settle the, North, the old Northwest Territory, like Ohio. And some uh, observers out there point out that you could have a teenager with the muscular development of, a, of an adult male, and you could have a 30-year-old man who had, by that point, been physically exhausted <laughs> and had the body of what we would expect today to be a 70-year-old man. Oh, it was certainly a more difficult way of life than what you are accustomed to. More physical work and fewer conveniences, I would say. We were not people to complain of our daily chores. Working the land was a way of life. It was a part of being an Ackerman. My name is Lawrence Ackerman, second eldest son of David. I can remember, at the ripe age of 18, renting a farm in Fordham, New York, and later a farm in Tapan, New York, and marrying Gertie Agberts in 1679. We were married in the Dutch Reformed Church in Bergen, New Jersey, which you call Jersey City. Gertie and I were parents of eight children. I can remember in 1689, the thrill of purchasing 295 acres in Bergen County, New Jersey. It was along the Hackensack River, extending west to the Saddle River at Woodbridge. My younger brother, Lodovic, also had a farm in Fordham when he was 18. He eventually had a family of eight children, the same size as my family. Lodovic married Jeanette Blyke in 1682 at Kingston, New York. They had one child and then moved to New Jersey and joined the Dutch Reformed Church in Hackensack in July of 1687. Four children later, Janetti died and Ludovic married Hildegard Bosch. They lived in the Hackensack area, but by 1705 they had moved to Phillipsburg, New York, or what you call Tarrytown. 
They belonged to the Sleepy Hollow Church. In 1713, they moved to New York City, where Ludovic died sometime before 1724. Abraham, my youngest brother, married Alte Van Leer in 1683 at the Dutch Reformed Church of Flatbush, Brooklyn. By 1684, he was a member of the Bergen Reformed Church in Jersey City, where Gertie and I had been married. I stayed close with Abraham. Well, actually, he stayed close with me, for in 1696, he owned a tract of land just south of that owned by me. It, too, reached from the Hackensack River to the Saddle River and covered most of what are the present towns of Woodbridge, Hasbrook Heights, and several other small towns. Abraham later purchased additional property in Hackensack, where, in 1704, he built his home with some help from his sons. He had 14 children altogether. From what I hear, the house survived for almost 250 years. Among the founders of this beautiful church in Hackensack, called the Church on the Green, were my brother David, myself, and our wives. Abraham followed our lead and joined the church in 1689. He was buried in the adjoining cemetery. It was in 1966 that the DAD 1662 sponsored this marker for his grave. My youngest brother David was born in 1653. When he was 27 years of age, he married Hillegant Verplank. She was from New Amsterdam. David owned property in the city at Number One Broadway. I understand it is now one of the most valuable pieces of real estate in America. In roughly 1678, David purchased the land with wampum, which are beads made from shells, gilders or gold, beaver skins, and various other items. In 1686, he sold the land for 640 pounds and moved to New Jersey on 540 acres in an area near Abraham and me. There he built his home and mill along the Hackensack River. David left the house, grain, and sawmill to his sons when he died in 1710. His widow, Hillegant Verplank, and their son, Johannes, continued to live there after David's death. About this time, Johannes built the house that has been preserved all these years, and today it is known as the Ackerman Zabriskie von Steuben House. It is located north of David's original house in a New Jersey historic park called New Bridge Landing in River Edge. This old sandstone house is truly a reminder of a somewhat forgotten way of life. There's not much stone in Holland itself, in the Netherlands, which is a, a lowland with a great deal of clay and a lot of water. Uh, the Dutch were great builders of brick, but not uh, very accustomed to building in stone. So from the French and the Germans and the English, they uh, adopted this technology, and they came up with one of the most I think admired uh, forms of architecture, colonial architecture in the United States. The Steuben House is one of 220 surviving sandstone houses built by the uh, Bergen Dutch, many of them by Ackermans. <laughs> and uh, they all have several features in common. They're all built very low to the ground. They're farmhouses, essentially. I think the Ackerman the Brisky Steuben house here is also typical uh, of the old houses in that nearly all of them that have survived, you can see, are built virtually to the edge of the roads, which has been a, a difficulty in preserving some of them. <laughs> that was called chatting distance. And they built these houses within chatting distance of the roads, uh, mainly because there was no other form of electronic communication, certainly no, none, no telephones, no mail delivery, even things like that. So whether it was a neighbor or a stranger, uh, you could converse with them easily from uh, the verandas or the piazzas in front of the house, and that was the 
only way you could find out what was going on in the world outside of your farm. Dating from about 1768, there were several stagecoach companies that made regular stops at Newbridge en route to the Hudson River. In those days, stagecoach drivers joined their passengers at the various taverns. Tavern stops were common since they were general meeting places for transportation, much as bus and train stations are today. Drunken driving was a problem and wrecked coaches and carriages were not uncommon. As late as 1834, a John Ackerman operated a stagecoach from Newbridge to Fort Lee. Let's hope he was one of our more industrious ancestors and didn't get into too much trouble. By the early 1700s, David and Elizabeth had a total of 48 descendants that we know of. They and their immediate descendants lived in what is now New York City, Long Island, and northern New Jersey, but already they were beginning to spread to other areas. After initially crossing the Hudson River and settling in the Hackensack and Tapan areas of Bergen County, New Jersey, the descendants of Abraham, Lawrence, and David Jr. soon established themselves along the various rivers, roadways, and valleys of the county. Some went along the Pascack and Hackensack rivers, others went north along the Saddle River, and some went towards Paramus. Gertje Ackerman Westervelt, or Aunt Peggy as she was fondly known, was born in Paramus in 1756. She was noted for her crawlers and Dutch cakes. Aunt Peggy was from the Abraham line and was the wife of John Westervelt. Some of the 17th and 18th century Ackerman homes and churches are still in use, and many have been given national and local historic preservation status. A familiar landmark for many years has been the David Ackerman Pell House in Saddle River, New Jersey. The first owners in 1745 were Johannes Ackerman and his second wife, Elizabeth Stagg. They had 245 acres on the west side of the Saddle River. Today, the remaining 11 acres have been divided into future home sites. David, the eldest son of Abraham, who helped build his father's 1704 house in Hackensack, moved to Paramus sometime prior to 1732, when daughter Yannette's married Jacob Van Verhees. David and his wife Marguerite Yerkes settled on some 200 acres in Paramus and built this house around 1740. Nearby is the Paramus Dutch Reformed Church, built in 1800. It is where many of our ancestors worshipped. This building replaced the original octagonal-shaped Paramus Kirk, the Dutch word for church, which was built in 1735. The church parsonage was built on land owned by Garrett Ackerman and lived in by John A. Ackerman, a grandson of Abraham and Elitz van Lur. Although not built by an Ackerman, the distinguished Day Mansion in Wayne, New Jersey is also part of our Ackerman heritage. It was the birthplace and home of Catherine Burdan, the first wife of Simeon Ackerman. He was in the Lawrence line from David. Victorian Gates was the home of Peter Ackerman in the Abraham line from David, 1662. Peter was a member of the New Jersey Assembly during the 1800s. His home, with 11 fireplaces in all, stood near the corner of East Ridgewood Road and Paramus Road in Paramus, New Jersey. The Ackermans certainly left their mark on the social and economic development of Bergen and other counties in New Jersey and New York. This is evident in the abundance of streets and avenues named after them. They can be found in almost every community in northern New Jersey, and even a few towns throughout the country bear the Ackerman name. Initially, from the New York City and northern New Jersey areas, the Ackerman descendants then moved north along the Hudson River to Kingston, Albany, and points north and west. Thus began their migration throughout the United States and Canada to areas like Saratoga, New York, where Lodwick's grandson Jacobus Ackerman settled. Members of his family later moved west to Wisconsin, Michigan, Illinois, and Ohio. Thomas A. and Catherine Ackerman and their four children moved from Bergen County, New Jersey to Pawnee County, Kansas in 1879, when the money and banking crisis of the 1870s hit the country. The family originally lived in a sod house. The lack of rain often caused crop failure and survival depended on adjusting to a limited diet of mush, milk, and wild game. Land prices fell to about a dollar an acre and corn sold for 13 cents a bushel. Eventually, they were able to build a small frame house. 
Migrations to areas throughout the United States and Canada might best be illustrated by the reunions of David Ackerman's 1662 families and groups held in various areas each year. A Canadian group meets at Winfield, Alberta, Canada. Another group of descendants of Lodwick, located in upstate New York, usually meet in August in Oneida, New York. Also a group of Lodwick descendants meet in July at Blue Dog Lake in Waboy, South Dakota. The descendants of David and Alice Ackerman, who left the Paramus area in 1830, went to Wisconsin and then on to the state of Washington in 1906. Their reunion is usually held in July at Bellington, Washington. Dirk Ackerman, born 1742, a great-grandson of Lawrence, first moved from the Hackensack, New Jersey area to Albany, New York, where he was married. Then he went to Nova Scotia and back to Albany. From there, his descendants went to Ohio, Missouri, Nebraska, Iowa, South Dakota, Montana, and to Nevada. This family group usually gets together every two years in Montana. Other groups have met in Mountain Grove, Missouri, Unionville, Michigan, Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, and Fullerton, California. The Jersey Dutch have certainly left a great legacy uh, in terms of uh, diet. Uh, some for example, pan cook, pancake, um, waffle. Um, I think probably one of the most uh, endearing American foods, cookie. Um, cook is the Dutch word for cake. And uh, much like, since English is a Germanic language, we sometimes sa add the E sound to a word to mean small or young, like Susan, Susie. Cookie in Dutch is a little cake. Uh, another great inheritance from the Jersey Dutch uh, is our, our pies, because they commonly ate pies for breakfast, which meant since you only fired up your bake oven on one day of the week, usually Monday afternoon, it would take you two to three hours to get your bread oven up to a, a temperature. They would break all, bake all their bread, cakes, pies, pudding, and pastry on that one day of the week. And uh, they would certainly bake seven or eight pies in these clay pie plates. Often they, the pie plates would be decorated with the bride's name or wedding date or family initials. And this was the earliest form of fast food because a farmer would get up with sunrise and they wouldn't sit down to breakfast. What they'd do is go off to um, the barn, water, feed the animals, you know, take care. And it might be two or three hours before you'd sit down to breakfast. So. You had a pie shelf with all these goodies on it. All you had to do when that, they came across the fields towards home was heat up a pie and you had a nice hearty meal. And from among the founding families, we have recipes for milk, meat, or fruit pies, depending on season. Over the 300 years since David Ackerman came to this country, his descendants have found their way into most every form of endeavor and occupation. Originally, when the country was young, most were farmers and tradesmen. But as the country developed, they moved into all the trades and professions required of a changing nation and a changing economy. Farms gave way to villages with their various trades and crafts, then to cities with industrial production. Stagecoaches gave way to the coming of the railroad. One such Ackerman in the railroad business was William Kelly Ackerman, born in 1832 in New York City. His mother was Cynthia Ackerman, and his father, Lawrence, served in the War of 1812. William Kelly Ackerman later became president of the Chicago, Illinois Central Railroad. The town of Ackerman in Choctaw County, Mississippi, is named after him. He was in the Abraham line from David, 1662. Another descendant was none other than Thomas Alva Edison. His many inventions, like the light bulb, have made major contributions to our present-day world. His great-great-grandmother was Mary Ackerman, granddaughter of David, 1662. His grandfather was John Edison, born in Holland. And closer to our present time was another noted individual, Nelson Ackerman Eddy, an opera singer whose motion pictures and duets with Jeanette MacDonald are well-remembered and enjoyed to this day. He was born in 1901 to Caroline Ackerman, whose father was Joseph Chandler Ackerman. The story of David Ackerman and his family, who arrived in this country in 1662, 
is only one of the many stories of families who came from Europe and settled here in the New World. Arriving in New Amsterdam, these David Ackerman family members, their children and their children's children, first settled in the New York and New Jersey areas, and they have gradually spread throughout the North American continent over the past three centuries. Their names are a reminder of the sacrifices that they made and the struggles they had to endure in order to persevere in this new world. Their achievements must truly be appreciated by not only present-day Ackerman descendants, but by future Ackerman descendants as well. For these are the people who helped settle this new continent, and they, along with many other families, formed a great country where freedom and prosperity are available for all. By being aware of the trials, tribulations, and triumphs of our ancestors, we are provided with a realization that the freedom and opportunities we presently enjoy are due to the constant efforts of those who came before us. The story does not end here. It is to be continued by you and your descendants. We wish you success in the search for your family history and heritage.